In this video, we're going to do some KPI analysis in Tableau. I'm going to show you how easy it is to do, give you some ideas of visualizations, and we're going to get started right now. So here we are in Tableau, and before we get started, I'm going to bring this over. This is where the question came from. So it came from Patrizio Palazza. Um, Italy, I'm guessing. And the question is, how do we get numerical KPIs with shapes? So it's basically, you're mixing together measured values with shapes. Now, off the bat, you can't do this. So uh, it's just by design of Tableau. And what's interesting about it is, I, I was starting to think, how can I do this differently? Or how can we actually show the same thing or even more, right? Without losing the uh, uh, what the user is trying to do. So what they're, tr what they're actually trying to do is they've got some values here and let me get my drawing tool. They've got some values at the top and just by the design, I can tell that each of these is a column in the data set on its own. So it's not a cross tab. And the way I can tell is these are separated. So anytime you see that they're separated, it means that they're multiple columns. If you have like date and it's in here, it means it's a single column with dates inside. So that kind of gives me a clue on the design. And so what I did was I recreated the data set. Let me bring it over here. And let me get my drawing tool. Here we go. So there's the data set there. And I'll um, I'll put a link in the description below if you want to kind of join along and practice. So what they've done is they've got two columns, like so, a calculation between the two. And it can be any calculation, plus, add, whatever. This one is a percentage change. And then they want to do a KPI at the end. And I can tell it's just a screenshot that they've added. Now you can't do this because this part is a shape. These ones are measured values and it just simply doesn't work. So let me show you an alternative Patrizio and let's start with the data set. So let me get rid of that and we're going to bring this data set in. So it's a very simple cross tab pivoted data set. So let's bring that in. I'm going to go connect Excel. All right. Yearly sales, which is what I was practicing with. Okay, let's do it. So I've got the data in there. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to recreate the data set that they had. So I'm going to go subcategory and we're going to bring these two in. Now, if I bring both of them in like this, it's a jewel, but uh, what they had was a measured uh, value. So I'm going to move 2018 and just drop it over this axis. And that creates my measured values. It's a bar chart because I've got measured values in here. So we're just going to move this into labels instead like so. And I can see that the years are on the rows. So we're going to move this one up here. So just a little practice on recreating things. So you can do it that way. There's obviously a million ways you can do this, but that is our data set. I'm going to do a simple calculation between the two fields. So we're going to go create calculated field and I'm going to go year on year change. And the formula is very simple. And whenever you have uh, numbers, in the fields and you try and type it in unlike strings if i go subcategory you'll find it if i go 2017 and there's a lot of commotion and dogs outside 2017 you actually have to type it out completely so i'm going to do 2017 sorry 2018 divided by 2017 like so and then i'm going to put the whole thing in brackets and then i'm just going to minus one we go. I'm just going to go OK. There we have it. So it's another continuous measure. And I'm just going to add that here. Now, if I change, oh, well, let's format this first to be percentage. Format, percentage. Yeah, like so. So it's actually, I believe, the exact same data set uh, that Patrizio had. So we have this. And what I want to do is I want to change this to shape. And I can't. Because measure names are measure values, you notice it has the marks card applies to the entire measure value. So you can't say, I want this one as a line. I want this one as a bar. I want this one as a something else, right? It doesn't work. The only way you could do that visually is if you move all three of them into the columns, and then now you have them as three separate ones, right? But that's not really what Pichetio wanted. So let's go back. Let me just go undo. So we have this. If I think about how we're going to do the actual KPI, you would really want to see, personally, if I'm like a manager and I want to see the progress, I want to see not only which ones have met the KPI, but by how much uh, relative to each other. So for example, I would most likely make this 
a visual representation straight away. I would probably go um, and add measured values here in columns, right? So I just hold, held control and moved it. So I can see like this, I would sort this year on year change, okay, using this button right here. So now I can see, wow, look at this one. Copiers is the highest by growth and then supplies is the lowest. So it kind of gives me a bit of context of just how much, right? So this is almost 100%, like, I mean, it's reduced by a factor of 10, which is massive. And you can tell that really easily when it's a visualization. When it's a cross tab, not so much. You can, I can, you probably notice straight away you're like, you tried to read it. Okay, so you can do that. Now, the next thing you want to do is, well, which ones have met the threshold? And I'll show you kind of a few ways to do this. You can hard code it. For example, if, if the threshold is 50%, I can do a calculated field and I go threshold like so. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this year and year change and do a, like, a, I think it's called a Boolean, not a Boolean, just an equality kind of comparison. I think it's called Boolean. And I, yeah, it is Boolean. It's like it's either greater than or less than. Yes. So we go 0 0.5, right? So 50%. So if you don't know how to do, um, like percentages like in your head and stuff, which I know most people don't, I, I struggle sometimes, just do whatever percentage you want, divided by 100, same thing, okay? And we go, okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this dimension as the control for color. So if I drop this into color, straight away you can see, wow, these have met the threshold, these ones have not. And what you can do, because there's always good and bad, especially with KPI, it's like you've met the key performance indicator or you haven't, is we're gonna go in here, edit the colors. Anything that's orange is good. So we go green and anything that's false, we go red, which is bad. All right, so you have that there. Let me just go entire view. So now you have that uh, visually. You can go a little bit further, which is if you bring the threshold into the rows, like so, you can actually have them separated out completely. I'm gonna move this one up just by clicking and dragging. Right? That way there's like a line, there's like a separator. And if you want to hide this, because it's kind of redundant if you have the colors, you can, I believe, go here, uh, show header. Yeah. So if you do that and just click show header, it will eliminate it, but you still get the split. A um, few more things you can do to clean this up is if you have labels already, which we do right here, you can get rid of the axis. Not necessary. Okay, because it's kind of, it's either labels or axis. And we also get rid of the vertical lines because we have no more access. So we just right click on the white space, format, go to this last one right here, and turn off the columns one. All right, and it, you're trying to take away as much as you can to make it very clear of what the person is looking at. All right, one last thing I'm going to add, which is what's called a parameter. So if you haven't done parameters before, I've done heaps of videos on that on my channel. If you want me to do more, you've got specific situations, just as always, leave a comment in the comment section below. So what I want to do is, let's say we're doing an exercise and, you know, we're in a meeting and everyone's together and they go, well, I don't think 50% is the best threshold. Maybe we should increase that to 60. Well, what does the data look like then? Well, what you can do is, instead of having to kind of go back into this formula for threshold and changing this to 60, we're gonna use what's called a parameter, which is basically you can change the value on the fly. So I'm gonna go in here, create parameter. And we're gonna call this threshold param. I actually like to say param at the end of mine most of the times because um, if it's the same as a dimension or a measure, it can get confusing once you start using it in different places. So I'm gonna go threshold param, we're going to go float, right? So just a number, current value, display format is going to be percentage. And we're gonna go 0 0.5 as that. And we're gonna go all, so you can type whatever you want in there and go okay. There you have it. And what we're going to do next is go into threshold, go edit, and change this into the parameter. So we go threshold, so you can see now we have that threshold param and go okay. Then we're going to right click here and go show parameter. And you can see this threshold. So if I change this to now 60, 0.6, you can see it changes as soon as you do it. So when you publish this tableau online, that function will be available. So you can do you know further what if analysis and change things. We can say, you know, 0 0.2, and it'll just keep changing 
I think you can do minus, minus 0.1. Right, and it goes on. That is it. So, Patricio, I hope this helps and gives you some ideas of how you can address the issue you have. Uh, until next time, have a great day, guys, and 